Okay, uh, welcome guys. This is uh, Superior Strength Powerlifting uh, 60 Day Challenge Nutrition Presentation. Um, here's my contact info, guys. Number, email, right there. Um, there's also a handout uh, that you guys can either follow along while we're going through this um, or you can uh, use to reference things like my contact information that's on that handout as well okay uh, so there's eight, eight important topics we're going to be covering here um, one is method of journaling selected uh, that's going to be journaling as far as like uh, how you journal your food uh, two uh, your caloric amount needed per day uh, that's something that I'm going to provide you guys so um, I'm just teaching you how to do it still that way you learn, um, but that will be something I do for you. And then we got three, a breakdown of macronutrient amounts, um, carbs, fats, and proteins. Um, this will help, I'll, I'll help you guys pick this stuff as far as what percentages uh, to use. Um, more on that later. We got four, menu selected of preferred foods, five, meal schedule, Six, scheduled time to prepare food during the week. Seven, initial measurements taken and initial assessments. And then eight, just communicating with your coach. So, just roll right on into that. Okay, so the first one here, method of journaling uh, selected. Uh, basically, you got to choose which one that you want to do. Um, there's calorie and uh, macronutrient uh, tracking um, is going to be our primary one. Um, that's going to be on my fitness pal or any other uh, calorie tracking app that you want to use um, you will be needing to share that information with your coach on my fitness pal you can easily find me and add me as a friend I think my username is Josh Toman um, all one word no spaces in between my first and last name uh, otherwise uh, you can screenshot that stuff um, if you journal in any other sort of way, you got to be able to share that stuff with me. Um, okay, so pros of tracking in an app like MyFitnessPal, uh, tracking of those calories are exact. Um, usually they, they can sync with some smartwatches or other uh, fitness apps, which help with calorie tracking in general. Um, they're easy and pretty user-friendly. Uh, you can plan ahead by entering in nutrients ahead of time. Uh, and then you got a um, you you can uh, you get a visual breakdown of macronutrients, and it helps you kind of stay on track because you can see where you're at it every day. Uh, cons of this method: uh, entering each ingredient can be time-consuming at first. I would say that that's only uh, for the first couple weeks. Uh, after that. You get very uh, good at doing the uh, process of entering in your ingredients in the app every time. Um, it requires some fami familiarity with the tech. I mean, that's if you just have never used a smartphone before. It's a big deal. Um, other than that, it's pretty good. Um, and then uh, that's it's it's for people that are a number oriented. So you're gonna get uh, those kind of results. So um, that can be a pro or a con. Um, and if you don't keep this in check, guys, uh, especially using MyFitnessPal, it can lead to unhealthy uh, and obsessive behaviors with tracking your food or calories. Um, so you always got to just keep yourself in check and make sure that you're doing these things for the good of the goal, not necessarily just tracking your calories um, because you're, you're obsessed with hitting a specific like if it's there if it's a, an obsession then I probably would uh, probably talk to a doctor or something like that okay anyway all right so what we got next here then um, let's back up real quick we're gonna talk more about that so basically guys the my fitness pal tracking or tracking your calories um, you're gonna be weighing your food if you do this method um, so if you are eating chicken, you're going to weigh your chicken with a scale. If you're eating broccoli with that chicken, you're going to weigh that broccoli. If you put some cheese on the chicken or broccoli, 
in a way that pretty much anything that you eat, you will weigh, okay, with the uh, meal tracking app method. Um, this is good um, for those of you, like I said, that are numbers oriented. Um, I myself do this method. I like it because I like to be able to know I'm at this specific calorie amount. Um, again, the calories aren't exact, uh, they'll be a little different, um, there'll be some variance based on what's actually in the food and what you track on the screen, but that variability does not matter, as the consistency is what really matters. Um, so you're, you're entering the food though in this tracking app, and you're weighing it, and that's how you track your calories with that method, okay? Um, okay, now on to the next method. Okay, this is another uh, method that you can do uh, for tracking guys. So you got to do one of these. You can either track your food uh, during the 60 days challenge through my fitness pal, or if that's really not up your alley, um, you can always track portion sizes. Um, this method of journaling, um, you're going to use your hand as a measuring tool on this one. Um, and you're also going to probably, preferably, I mean, um, want to make sure that you're journaling in some kind of like notebook or some other method, uh, just so you can have a reference and go back and look at what your food was, uh, in the past. And so you have something that you can uh, report to me, but basically guys with this, you're just using your, your hand as a portion size. Uh, measurement tool uh, for your carbs, fats, proteins, and your veggies. Um, you can, uh, I believe it was a palm is a protein serving, you got a thumb is a fat serving, a uh, fist is a carb serving, and uh, I usually go, I think it was a fist is a veggie serving as well. So uh, the pros of this one, simple, it's easy to follow wherever you are. Um, you can have your hands with you everywhere, so you can always measure food. Um, it's less task oriented, it's stress free. Um, it's great for on the go. It's good, it's good for learning portion sizes too. Um, the cons of this method, food measurement isn't really exact. Um, it's easy to misjudge portions, and it, it can be harder to track recipes. Um, especially when you're putting in little little ingredients in it stuff. It's easy to do that when you can enter everything into an app. But when you're measuring it with your hands or uh, just trying to track portion sizes in general, it's not too easy when you got a lot of ingredients. Um, so you guys can do either two of those methods. Um, you can also, um, this is the same as portion size, but you can uh, use that plate too as a way to measure food um fruits grains veggies proteins dairy um that's something the usda has that they uh put out there so i figured i'd put it in here um so the next topic then how many meals should you guys be eating each day um you're going to be starting with three meals a day okay um if you've been eating two in the past if you've been eating four in the past that's fine whatever um, but we're going to start with three, okay? So breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, now the timing of those meals can be different. Um, you can eat for eight hours of the day or 12 hours, okay? And what I mean by that is your eating window from your first meal to your last is either eight hours, um, nine hours, 10 hours, 11 hours, or 12 hours, okay? Um, for those of you that are busier, um, on the go a lot, you're probably going to want to go for that eight hour eating window because that, uh, essentially in quotation marks, you miss breakfast. Uh, you're not really missing breakfast. You're eating it later in the day. Um, but you can do that, uh, if you're a busy type person or you're just a person that doesn't normally eat breakfast, but you're still going to eat three meals. So that means you're getting those meals. Uh, about every two to three hours um, or guys you know if you're down to the 12 hour mark uh, you're gonna space those meals out a little bit more eat relatively soon when you get up 
uh, eat your lunch, eat your dinner, and those are like four to five hours apart, okay? So start that way, guys, okay? Um, so we're eating three meals a day. We're tracking with my fitness pal, or we're using the portion sizing uh, via the plate right here, or uh, via measurement by, a hand, by our hands, okay? Um, and then so now guys, uh, for those of you that are going to be tracking with my fitness pal, uh, you're going to be needing, um, to know, well, you, you will, uh, need to know this. It will be done for you. Um, but again, we're just teaching you how to do it. Um, how many calories you need to eat. Okay. Um, it's a pretty simple equation. Okay. And the more you're active, the more calories you need. So if you guys have a job that is pretty dang active, you're moving around a lot, um, you're going to be eating more during the day. If you're at a desk most of your day, you're not going to be eating as much. Okay. Um, RMR, just for your uh, knowledge, stands for resting metabolic rate. I'll refer to uh, resting metabolic rate as RMR a few more times during this presentation. Um, that's the equation right there for men and women, though. Uh, like I said, guys, this is something that I'll be doing for you, but just wanted to teach you how to do it. Um, you need to know this because this RMR is your base calories, okay? If you were to do nothing all day long, um, RMR is how many calories you need at minimum to just do your bodily functions, like pumping your blood, breathing, uh, processing nutrients, all that good stuff. Okay, so once we know that number, that, then we can move on. And we got to track our activity, okay? Um, if you're using a smartwatch or your phone, um, you can use the website right there. Um, and uh, put your steps that you had that for that day. Um, and that'll help calculate out the calories, activity calories you burned through those steps. Otherwise, uh, usually smartwatches pair with my fitness pal. Um, so does your iPhone. I, I don't know about other devices, but I know my iPhone pairs with my fitness pal. Tracks my steps in there, adds the activity calories on. Uh, to the app uh, for me so I don't have to do it manually um, okay so you will also need to add those uh, basically um, activity calories onto uh, the RMR so that's essentially um, like if you walked 10,000 steps in one day and that was 500 calories burned um, and your RMR was 2,500 that means the, that day you burned 3,000 calories um, you can kind of see in the example over to the next. If you were to manually do this, guys, um, he would calculate out your RMR with the equation in the previous slide. And then as you can see, um, you would add um, your average steps and calories burned for five days. That average, you would add that average onto your RMR. And that's how many calories you would know. Uh, that you burn typically on a day okay again nothing you guys need to know because uh, it will be calculated out for you but just so you are educated on how the process works okay so next part here we're going to be selecting macronutrient amounts um, this will be your this will not be your responsibility but it is helpful information um, macronutrients equals large nutrients um, just a good way to remember that um, micronutrients would be like vitamins and minerals uh, macronutrients is carbs proteins and fats um, carbs are going to be your main energy source um, fats are as well um, but they also have fats also have a role in hormone function and brain function uh, proteins primarily are going to uh, help with muscle and tissue repair um, these are essential. Without these nutrients, we could not function or even live for a few days. Um, so we got to make sure we're, we're eating the appropriate amount of each of these. Okay, so um, 
following the equation that we had um, before, our RMR equation. So we calculated that RMR out, we got our activity calories, and we got that final number. We said it was uh, 2,500 calorie RMR, 500 calories burned, tracking our steps. So that was 3,000 calories, that's your TDEE. Okay, so what that is is total daily energy expenditure and how you guys will be giving your uh, calorie and macro amounts is in percentages. Um, so you'll get how many calories you're supposed to eat every day. You'll get how many percentages of carbs, fats, and proteins. Uh, that That's going to be what's prescribed to you um, via, from your coach. Um, so you can see the calculation out there, 1,200 calories from carbs, 900 from fat, and 900 from uh, protein. So here's a nice little example, just so you guys can get an understanding of what it looks like. Um, so if your uh, goals fit onto one of these categories, lower carb for fat loss, moderate carb for maintenance, or higher carb for bodybuilding, uh, more than likely, this is what your macros are going to kind of look like. It's a little bit of a tweak. Um, sometimes we add more carbs or more protein, depending on what you do every day. Um, again, that's just uh, something your coach decides. But just as an example there. So basically, though, um, that's how you calculate that out. Um, so again, guys, this is what, what you will be provided as far as information into what you need to eat every day you'll be given how many calories uh, the percentage of carbs fats and proteins you need to consume of those calories um, then we'll go on to the next section here um, you will also uh, be given some help guys uh, in selecting your foods and creating your menu okay um, so now that we know how to calculate out uh, our RMR, we figured out how many activity calories we had, we know our macronutrient breakdown, um, so we got to pick out what kind of foods we want to eat, okay? Now guys, this is the bit most important thing to me for you to understand is I want you to be eating foods that are going to work for you. Um, I don't want you forcing yourself to eat something or eat a specific way that is not going to be uh, convenient for your lifestyle um, and also sustainable okay if it's not sustainable then you're not going to do it after this challenge and then you're just going to go back to the way you were doing things before and then life goes back to the way you were doing things before and it's no fun okay so we don't want to do that uh, we're just going to keep on making progress that's the goal so we got to teach you how to do that so uh, please pick foods um, if you do make adjustments to the recommended list, pick foods that are going to be actually uh, ones that you eat. Um, okay, so obviously I've been talking about this. Eating 100% clean foods is boring. Oh, let's do that. Is boring and not realistic. Having a menu with a variety of foods allows for more combination of recipes. Okay, all right. It's going to be your job to stick to this menu, guys, okay? I'm going to tell you how many calories to eat. I'm going to tell you how many carbs, fats, and proteins to eat. I'm going to give you a recommended foods list that you can make adjustments to. You're going to pick a method of tracking your food. You're going to share that information with me. But it's always up to you as far as how strictly you follow it, um, how many questions you ask me, um, and how honest you are with yourself, okay? So... Just do those things and we'll be good to go. Um, here's your sample menu, guys. Again, that's going to be on your handout that you'll be provided as well. Um, this is uh, something that I put together um, as far as most of these things are things that I eat on a daily basis. Um, pretty common types of foods um, that are carbs, fats, proteins, and of course we've got that veggie option as well. Um, but basically, guys, what you're trying to do here... Um, when you know now that you know you're gonna know your calories that you need and how many carbs fats and proteins you need um, and you got your list of foods you're gonna take one food from each of these columns 
and you're going to make a meal out of that, okay? So you can put oats together with egg whites, a little bit of egg yolk, um, and some cauliflower, and make some uh, breakfast with a little bit of cauliflower as a side, okay? You could take some bananas, put some protein powder with that, uh, put some Greek yogurt with that, put some uh, peanut butter with that, and then put some spinach in that, and that could be a shake, okay? So, literally just picking things from each column, combining them together, and making my meal. Convenient thing here is now that you've got this list, um, if you do want to make adjustments, so let's say that I never want to eat rice ever. Like, I just, I just don't eat rice. But I eat cereal, because I just like cereal. There's nothing wrong with eating cereal. Are there better choices we can make? Sure, but as long as we're making good choices, at least 80% of the time, I'm not too concerned about it. So put cereal down in there. Um, combine that with milk as your fat option then, okay? And then you've got a protein and a veggie option left over that you need to make up for that meal. Combine whatever you would like together with your cereal there. Um, so you can see it, it doesn't have to be exactly clean foods. Make adjustments to this menu. So I suggest making just five custom adjustments, taking literally one item uh, from each column, two from one, and uh, be done with it. And that way you have some kind of customization there. You don't feel like you're 100% following a strict regimen. Um, or if you just want to stick with this list and you're good with that, whatever, that's fine. Uh, one thing I did want to point out with the foods list just to make sure you remember that animal fat um, is going to be included in a lot of your protein options, especially your pork, especially your uh, salmon, salmon, fish, some fish, uh, and beef. Okay, just keep that in mind. All right, moving on here. Um, so if you guys are having troubles with uh, recipes, uh, here's some websites. It's on the handout as well for you. Uh, the the website as well um, should help you out okay so real quick we're gonna review before we move on so just so we are looking at the big picture here we've got um, we know how many calories we need to eat okay coaches taught you how to calculate those out he is going to provide that to you we know how many carbs fats and proteins we need to eat those are going to be given to you via percentages from your coach, but you know how to do it just in case. Um, you have your menu options selected. You're going to eat three times a week, or sorry, three times a day to start out. Um, and here's where we're going to talk a little bit more about that meal schedule and timing. Um, if you were needing to make uh, some adjustments down to two or four meals a day, okay? So anyway, let's talk about that. So like I was talking about before, your eating window is going to be 8 to 12 hours long. Um, you want to make sure you get all your calories in your eating window no matter what it is. So if your eating window is 8 hours, it's less time. You got to eat more food during that time. In a smaller amount of time, I mean, um, which means meals might be a little bit bigger. That's totally fine. Um, if you guys do end up eating two or four meals a day, um, probably two meals a day, you're closer to those that eight-hour window. Again, I'd recommend uh, if you are eating two meals a day, probably having a smaller snack at the end of the day, um, so you get an eight-hour eating window. I don't want to. I don't want to have anybody go below an eight-hour eating window. It's not necessary. Um, if you're eating four hours a meal or four hour or four meals a day, um, you're going to be eating those more often. Okay, um, you're about every three hours to get those in. Um, and if you're wanting to eat four meals a day in eight hours, then you got to eat them real close together. Okay, so any combination is fine. Um, but like I was talking about before, guys, it's best just to start with a baseline. And that baseline is just three meals a day. Um, 
Um, your breakfast is going to be your biggest meal. Your dinner is going to be your smallest meal. Um, eating all the calories that you're prescribed to eat. The proper amount of carbs, fats, and proteins. Um, eating that within 8 to 10 hours. Just trying that out for a couple weeks. Seeing that what that does to your body composition. Um, if you're not seeing results, that's something to talk to your coach about. Um, if you are seeing results um, and that eating style fits your lifestyle just fine, we'll continue. If it's a little bit difficult to eat that way, um, for whatever reason, um, we can make adjustments and make sure results continue. But like I, like I said, it's best to just start with a baseline. And that baseline is three meals a day uh and eating them for eating them within eight to ten hours okay um let's see uh scheduling time to prepare your meals is going to be really important guys um you're going to have to meal plan uh even if you're uh someone like me that works from home for the most part uh, you're going to want to make sure that you are preparing uh, your meals ahead of time because uh, you're more likely to follow that meal plan then okay um, our recommendation is to schedule one to two times each week to prepare um, your meals typically people choose Sunday and Wednesdays um, the best strategy is the meal plan what you'll eat for dinner and lunch um, you can um, typically prepare breakfast if you're a breakfast eater um, if you're um, trying to go the opposite way you can always prepare your breakfast and lunch and then uh, eat your dinner and prepare that once you get home um, but most of the time I recommend people just prepare two out of the three meals they're gonna eat every day because usually we have time to prepare at least one um, let's see All right, so we're going to now talk about some measurements and assessments. Um, initial measurements that we're going to do, guys, before photos, we're going to weigh ourselves. We're going to get body fat percentage if you can, and body measurements. Uh, your weekly measurements are going to be your photos, um, weight, and or body fat percentage. And then your final measurements are the same as those initial measurements. Um, guys, for weight... Uh, please do that same time, same day, same everything, same variables, lighting, same with the pictures, everything like that needs to be the same as much as you can from week to week. That way we can see the progress the best. Um, you'll be able to update that stuff in the True Coach app. Um, progress photos, guys, uh, prefer you share them with me. Um, they're not required. It's not like you anything bad happens if you don't do them um, but they are very helpful uh, when you get towards the end um, and uh, they're very uh, beneficial to look at as far as when you get done with the challenge to see how far you've come um, let's see uh, body fat percentage like I said unless you uh, can test that don't worry about that one um, Body measurements, please watch that YouTube video right there, that link. Um, again, it's in the handout that I'll provide you. You can click on that link in there. Um, that's just going to show you how to measure, measure your body with a tape measure real quick. And you'll record those results in uh, True Coach. Um, and then I think this is close to the last thing here. Uh, perfect timing. So guys, uh, I just wanted to go over communicating with me real quick. Um, pretty much 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. You hit me up, call me, text me, email me, whatever. I'll message you back pretty dang quickly. Um, outside of those hours, no guarantee. Um, please only text me unless it's an absolutely emergency. Like, oh my gosh, Josh, uh, I don't have any workouts to do right now. The True Coach app is messed up. I don't have my workouts please help me if it's something like that um, let me know and I can take care of it then other than that um, unless it's 8 to 5 Monday through Friday um, I'm not gonna promise any immediate response 
Um, if you do guys, if you guys do have questions, uh, best if you can uh, wait a few days, see if you get a few more questions, write them down as they come, and then email me uh, with bullet points, and I can email you back with the answers underneath those bullet points. Um, there's my contact information again. If you need to uh, schedule a time to meet guys with me, um, you can click on the calendar link too. That's in the handout that I'll provide to you. Uh, check that out. Uh, schedule your halfway uh, consult. Um, so that'll be somewhere around December, at the beginning of December. Wow, think about that. Uh, beginning of December, so uh, make sure you go ahead and schedule that um as soon as you can that way we get that taken care of um i think that's it yep almost done here we're looking forward to it guys looking forward to the challenge looking forward to you guys learning how to do this um properly how to do it sustainably um here with you during the journey and uh let's go ahead and uh, get after it okay